Let's settle now for the news. And in our first story, more than half of the members of parliament belonging to the opposition NDC have resolved to still recognize Haruna Idrisu as the minority leader. There have been major disagreements within the party after Dr. Cassia Latoforsen was named as the new leader of the NDC minority, ending Haruna Idrisu's six year tenure. Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kwiku Asante has a wrap of Thursday's encounter uh, with those press conferences. Saint, the current uh, leaders of the House, uh, Honorable Haruna Idrisu Muntaka and Co, are uh, deemed to still be in office. Former Majority Leader Kletu Savokade announcing the resolve of he and some 69 other colleagues to continuously recognize ousted Haruna Idrisu as the minority's leader in parliament. This is despite the party announcing Kesel Latoforsen as a new minority leader. The group says the party has acted unlawfully in the change of leadership. Early on Thursday, the new minority leader, Dr. Atoforsen, held a news conference at which he pledged to unite the party. I have held fruitful and positive conversation, in fact, frank conversation, with my senior brother, the Honorable Haruna Idrisu. I commended him for his admirable leadership and stewardship when he was granted the opportunity by a great party to lead us. Our first responsibility is to unite the caucus, and that will be number one on the agenda. Things of this nature happens, but obviously there's the need for us to show leadership, and we will do just that. He followed this up with a meeting with the NDC's national leadership, with his colleagues who make up the new leadership. Ousted Chief Whip, Muntaka Mubarak says they only want due process to be followed. We are equally concerned that the letters that were issued were not the decision of the party. Our party as NDC has about four decision-making uh, group structures. First, the Congress, where all delegates meet to take decision. Second is the National Executive Committee, that's met. And then third is the Functional Executive Committee. It is when this group takes decision, then you get the General Secretary and the Principal Officers implement. Then we also have the Council of Elders, even though our constituency says that they are advisory. Sometimes, periodically, they also uh, give directions and then the party tries to implement. We are firm that I serve as unfair, I serve on NIC, I go to Council of Elders as an observer, and I also on the political committee as an observer. Congress. All of us as members of parliament are had, members had, of Congress. Had, had two years, and the uh, minority leader is also on this, all these levels. At no such meeting was there any agenda to discuss this. So it is clear that it is a letter, yes, written by the general secretary, but the decision may be just the decision of some few people in the party. And we believe that our party should sit up. The new leadership also paid a catchy call on Speaker Alban Bagben. Here is Deputy Minority Leader Emmanuel Amakufibua. He's a wise counselor, so we are very encouraged by it and we thank him for that. You know, our priority right now is to make sure that we unite our caucus. That's our number one priority and that is so important to us. Of course, you cannot lead when your crowd, your, your, your people are not united and that's our singular focus and we are confident we will do that. From the look of things, this deep crack in the NDC will fester for a while, even as party leadership try to calm the waters in the background. Reporting for Joy News, Kweku Asante. Now, a young man in his early 30s has been butchered by unknown assailants at Krofrom in the Ashanti region. Eyewitnesses say the incident occurred around 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Residents suspect a revenge attack by the assailants a year after the deceased harmed their colleague. Love FM's Nanabwache Dankwayadom has more in the following report. The deceased is only known as Kandi in the Krofrom community. 
Residents who witnessed the alleged murder say the deceased died after receiving multiple cutlass wounds from the assailants. <laughs> So after he was being mobbed by armed men, he tried to struggle for his life. But unfortunately, he fell down here and he was unable to survive. The body of the deceased has since been deposited at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital morgue. From Kumasi, Nana Bwachi Dankwa Yadam reporting for Joy News. Well, following from there, the Wa High Court has handed another sentence to two robbers who have already been sentenced to 20 years imprisonment. Wa High Court Judge Justice Yusuf Asibe sentenced the duo to a combined 35 year imprisonment term in hard labor for robbery. Rafiq Salam now reports. The trial presided over by the supervising Wa High Court judge, Justice Aladu Yusuf Asibi, lasted for 14 months. The crime was alleged to have been committed by four notorious hardened criminal quadruplet cabal who makes life uncomfortable for travelers on the solar Wa Highway. One of the suspects was lynched by the village folks, whilst another is at large. Two of the suspects 19-year-old Musa Al-Hassan and 20-year-old Isaac Muizdin were therefore arrested and slapped with four charges, attempted robbery, robbery, unlawful entry, and harm. They pleaded no guilty to the charges and had no legal representation. In the end, the first accused, Musa Al-Hassan, was found guilty of the four charges and sentenced to 20-year imprisonment, while the second accused, Isaac Muizdin, was found guilty of three charges and sentenced to 15 years imprisonment and in hard labor. Here is the prosecutor and principal state attorney at the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General's Department in the Upper West Region, lawyer Shahid Abdul Shakur, stating the facts of the case. On the 13th of November 2021, four armed men around Ga between Ga and Samombo stopped travelers and robbed them of various sums of money. In the process, a pregnant woman who was eight months pregnant was being taken to the hospital because she had problems. And then they stopped him, but the motor rider managed to escape with the pregnant woman and rushed her to the nearest village and informed the village. And the village mobilized and came in and was able to arrest one of the accused persons. That's the first accused person. But the three other persons managed to escape. Later in the night, that was around 2 a.m., later in the night, the police again had information and moved in and arrested the second accused person. But the fourth accused person was also arrested by the village, um, villagers. Unfortunately, by the time the police got there, he was lynched. The third accused person is on the run. We, are, we, are, we don't know his whereabouts, and I think that we are still fighting to get him. But today we had a judgment after about a year of trial the court ruled today and found as a fact that we have proven our case beyond reasonable doubt and they were convicted and sentenced to 15 years imprisonment IHL. The two jailbirds are already serving 20 year sentence for robbery by the Wasekur court. Same accused persons were already convicted by the circuit court because at the time that they were on trial, at some point they were admitted to bail and during the time of their bail, they went and committed another robbery again. This time round, they was arraigned before circuit court, and the circuit court expeditiously dealt with them and sentenced them to 20 years imprisonment in the, in the circuit court case. And now
Now, today, they've been sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. And now, the Dagbon Forum wants the special prosecutor to investigate the sale of government lands in Tamale. The forum says the OSP should give the Tamale land similar attention uh, it gave state land at the Achamota Forest. Members of the forum believe the investigations should start from 2012 to cover both the NDC and the current NPP regimes. The Dagbon Forum is a platform for all Dagombes to work to promote peace and development of the Dagbon Kingdom. The forum is made up of eminent sons and daughters of the kingdom from home and abroad. It is in this vein that the forum is asking for interventions. Addressing a press conference in Tamale, the president of the Dagbon Forum, Chief Sokoyana Mahama Santaro said the wanton sale of government lands in the area would not be tolerated any longer. As per an eviction notice to traders at the timber market in Abuabu has been disposed of to a private developer. We first of all wish to put it on record that such a place in Abuabu named Ward I and the entire forest reserve area that includes the Ababu timber market. It's a protected area. It belongs to the Forestry Commission. The entire forestry area is under the management of the Forestry Commission as per Ghana Forest Ordinance Act 1927, Cap 157. In the light of this, we wish to point out that no part of the forest land can be sold or disposed of without an executive instrument that can alter the original arrangement. We are therefore, by this, sending a caution that any attempt to encroach the forest land under the pretext of private development will be resisted and challenged by all means possible legally. He also named some other government land he said they have been given out. Ladies and gentlemen, friends from the media, we have got a significant number of examples such as reckless sale and acquisition of land in around Tamale. Mention can be made of the old irrigation development authority bungalow behind Catholic Guest House near a Greek traffic where staff of the Minister of Agri were living, disposed of. In our next story, some individual bondholders are asking government to pay arrears owed them. They say government has for the past two years failed to honor its promise of paying bondholders on the amalgamated mutual fund, which faces extinction by the domestic debt exchange. Yao is an affected investor. They say the first portion is just 21, with a promise to pay another 20% in 22, and then the remaining 60% in the next three years. three years. But last year, they did not make any payment. And they even had a courtesy of informing creditors there that they, they had not made any money. We waited and nothing came. People made calls. They were only told that they don't have money, and that was it. I, I, do, I do have some inner feeling that the AM fund may probably have invested the money in these bonds as well. That, that could be contrary to the Public Financial Management Act because it was government's own money that was approved by Parliament to be used to pay these creditors. It couldn't have been used to buy government bonds again. But it amazes me how the AM fund is dry just after a year, after the entire $28 billion was approved for government to pay these creditors. So, I mean, this is why we are currently protesting the inclusion of individuals in this debt, domestic debt exchange because there are a lot of people in my category who lost money in the first banking sector cleanup and are currently also going to lose money in the exchange. So, you are just telling us basically that we can't trust banks, we can't trust uh, mutual funds, and we can't trust anybody else. And that's how we wrap up the news this morning, but stay with us. The news review is right up next. We'll be right back.